hi, it's a lipstick gal. Thank you so much for watching today. I'm gonna do a quick get ready with me and include a little bit of a story time. Somebody asked for some history on a comment that I made in a previous get ready with me. So thank you for watching. Thank you for being subscribed. I will list everything I am using in the description box down below, but a lot of these are kind of like the usual suspects. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. It's um, not a day that I was really planning on filming, but um, I thought it might be fun to kind of, you know, do a little bit of a story time because somebody asked for it. I never really think that, you know, you're that interested, but if you are, and there's something I mentioned that you're curious about, please let me know. Jen K happened to ask, in my giant eyeshadow palette declutter if she's like can we have a story time on that time you live in spain and i was like sure i didn't really think that a lot of people would be interested in that and i think i might have mentioned it in passing a couple of times so uh let me tell you kind of my history with spain when i was really young like toddler age my parents moved to spain for two years I was one and a half, and there was this really cute photo of me and my grandma, um, and we were at, I think, at the San Francisco airport. This is like 1976, and my grandparents went with us to the airport to drop us off, and we moved to Spain for two years. So between one and a half and three and a half, we lived in Spain. My parents decided to move not for cultural reasons or for a job in the mid 70s, but because my dad wanted to study classical guitar. My dad had already graduated, gotten married, and had been working, teaching lessons, and you know playing professionally as a classical guitarist, but not a lot. <laughs> but he, he really wanted to be like a lot better so he could perform. And that was kind of like his lifelong dream. And so we moved to Spain for two years so my father could study classical guitar. He'd been playing uh, music, guitar and piano ever since he was like single digits. Like since he was like, I think five or six is when he started taking piano lessons. And then I think maybe nine or 10 started taking guitar and he fell in love with it. And when he was in college, he was a music major. He also did pre-med, because surprise, surprise, not everybody has it in them to be a professional musician. And uh, my dad is now a physician. <laughs> so the music thing didn't really pan out for the long term. I remember learning to speak. I was a year and a half. I, I had a few words, English words, but my mom being Mexican and my dad having already spent a year in Spain while he was in college before he was married, studying classical guitar, um, going to school, and uh, he just fell in love with the culture. So he wanted to go back and study more guitar. So that's what we were doing there in the 70s. I'm going to be using a little bit of the Glossier Wouder to set my uh, under eye and my face today. There were several things that were super cool about living in Spain as a kid. First of all, you learn a different language. And I think also the fact that my brother and I not only you know, learned Spanish. Um, neither one of us speak like perfect Spanish. I speak better than he does because I went back for a year during college. Um, but we understand, I would say, my brother probably understands 70 to 75% of what's being said. Um, my year in college and the Spanish I took while I was in school, I think helped me get to the point where I understand about 85% of what's said. The one thing that I think is also really great about living in another country, and it doesn't have to be a European country, but any other country, you know, as an American, we take so many things for granted and we think the whole world is just like us. And that is not the case. And that's what I love so much about my parents having taken the time to, you know, take us to another country and have lived there. They made so many friends. We still have, you know, family friends that we keep in contact with. Um, when I went back in the 90s for school, you know, I was being invited to people's homes, left, right, and center. I could travel just about anywhere within a couple of different regions and have, you know, family friends to stay with. We would go on vacation. Um, after we moved back and we would see friends and we never stayed at a hotel. We always had a friend's house to stay at. So we made some amazing, amazing friendships while we were there. But beyond that, there's also the, the aspect of learning a different culture and realizing that it's not the same everywhere. 
it's it's not like it is here and it makes you appreciate what you have and it also really makes you appreciate the differences that there are in other cultures and other countries other foods other ways of doing things i think that was probably the best thing for me as a kid and then later as a college student is realizing that the american way is just one way I have not used this bronze goddess from Estee Lauder in a long time, but I remember loving it. So I'm going to go and use this today. Um, another thing that is, uh, I think, a really good holdover from that time in Spain is <laughs> there is a, a lot of music in my family. And, you know, the fact that my dad and mom moved to Spain for two years so my dad could study classical guitar says a lot about how important that music is, even though he's not a professional musician now. Um, he really instilled a love of music in my brother and I. My brother plays guitar, my brother plays piano. Um, I grew up playing piano and then I moved to harp. And uh, my husband, thankfully, is another person who really enjoys music. He plays bass guitar. He can noodle around on a guitar, on a ukulele. You know, anything that is guitar shaped and has strings, he usually does just fine with. He used to play string bass when he was in college. He also plays tuba, so all the bass instruments, string bass, tuba, bass guitar. I was teasing, he sings bass and choir. He is the person who likes like that deeper end of things. But he has such a strong love and affection for music which is why when I was really serious about our kids, not just kind of taking piano lessons for a year or two or picking up an instrument for a little bit, I said, our kids are gonna take music and they're gonna take it like from when they start in grade school all the way through the end of high school, we're gonna have them take professional lessons. He's like, okay, he was so for that. He's done a lot of music, so he's always been really into that. But my dad, I think, was the one who really instilled that love of music in me. I'm gonna be using this Balm Blush, the Balm Desert. Do they? Do they even still make this? I don't know. I kind of hope they do, but I it looks kind of, it says it could be a blush or bronzer. I would use it as a blush because it's just a little bit rosier, but I like that it's very neutral. It's not, not too much. So I'm using the Estee Lauder Heat Wave Highlight from the Bronze Goddess line. I already started putting a little bit of it on. My phone rang in the middle. So <laughs> it's like Argh! interrupting my recording schedule. Um, I just love having done, well, I'm still in the process of it. I might record another one after this, uh, declutter. Oh my goodness. I have been struggling to declutter, but it gives me such a sense of freedom and it really lets me see what I have in my collection and reach for what I know I'm gonna love, love, love. Um, and I hadn't used this highlight. I hadn't used the bronzer in a long time. And a lot of that is just because you know, there comes a point where you have so much, you don't even know what you have. I have so much, I don't even know what I have. I shouldn't say you, because you probably don't have this problem. One of my uh, favorite takeaways from having spent time in Spain and having uh, learned how to cook some of their food, especially when I was in college, and what my mom taught me that she learned from her friends, and we lived there when I was really little. Um, there is a special dish, and it's, my favorite, this is like my comfort food. This is what like some people talk about comfort food and they think mac and cheese or they think like a lasagna or something like that. This is my mac and cheese growing up. Like the food that makes me feel like ultimate comfort is um, an egg and potato dish. It's basically a potato frittata. It has olive oil, salt, pepper, onions, and potatoes. And eggs that's it and um, in Spain it's called tortilla española and or Spanish tortilla but it's the best and you can make a tortilla out of spinach instead of potatoes or out of fava beans instead of potatoes you can put any vegetable in there in place of the potato but the potato is the quintessential you'll find it all over the country What's interesting is I didn't know this, but it looks like there is also a very similar dish that they make in Argentina called tortilla de patata, which is potato tortilla. And um, I didn't know, but it must be because, you know, the Spaniards, when they went places, they took stuff with them. <laughs> and I have loved that since I was a kid. I still make it probably twice a month here at my house. It's and my kids have grown up. It's like their comfort food, too. But it's one of those things that when I finally learned how to make it, I used to enjoy it when I was a kid and I would be eating it at, uh, at home. My mom would make it regularly, 
but I didn't really learn how to make it until I lived in Spain in college. And the one thing that was cool about the school that I went to, they not just focus on teaching you the language, you know, reading, writing, spelling, speaking, all of that. They really also focused on the culture. So they taught you how to cook the food. They taught you about the different festivals around the area, um, what they meant. They taught you about the art, the history. So we, they would take us on like, okay, this, you know, four day span, we're going to be going over here and we're going to be going to this festival, but we're going to go to all the museums and we'll go to all the points of historical interest. So we did a lot. I learned a lot about the culture that year. Um, part of it was through the school I was at, and part of it was also, you know, you make friends, and they teach you the rest. I had a really, really, really good time. I really enjoyed it so much, but I love that I learned how to, you know, cook the food. Some of my all-time favorite comfort foods are Spanish foods. I'm going to move into my um, eyeshadow today. I'm going to be using uh, these four shades here from Sydney Grace. I'm... I couldn't quite dupe it perfectly, but I wanted to see if I could find alternatives to this monochromes from Glossier. You can tell the ones from Sydney Grace are significantly, significantly more glittery. Um, but I definitely wanted to see if I could find something that was similar because I really like the color story here. I just have been struggling with some of the formulas and I like that Sydney Grace is like super easy and it takes no effort at all for me, which is what I want. So I couldn't find that matte shade in the Glossier. So I mix these two and the shade is pretty close. I still struggle to maintain my Spanish. My Spanish was really good the year that I came back and all the way through the end of college. I think that I, I did a really good job. I continued to take Spanish classes. I actually have a BA in Spanish, but <laughs> Oh, I struggle in the Spanish department, but I'll, I'll tell you, um, my, my parents, their Spanish is great. Of course, my mom being Mexican, easy peasy for her, but my dad, um, he just continues to talk to my mom. And when we lived in California, when I was like a kid and in college, I don't think my parents left to go to Ohio until I was in my late twenties. Anyway, he just continued to speak it with anybody he possibly could. He would just kind of, oh, you speak Spanish? He'd instantly split to Spanish. He still does that, but there were fewer people in the Midwest than there were in Central California, <laughs> Southern and Central California when I was growing up. I will list what these shades are in the description box down below. So the way that I try to maintain my Spanish is through watching movies in Spanish or watching shows that come from a different country. Like, let's say that there's something from Mexico or something from Argentina. I try and watch it without the subtitles. And it takes about 20 minutes before I'm finally not like translating every single word and it finally like flips and it works for me. And I don't catch everything. That's the one thing that's so uh, interesting and it can be a little bit of a struggle for me. Every country has their own slang terms. You know, words have different meanings. That's the interesting thing about, you know, there's like... I think 18 different words for a straw and depending on what country you're in it can either be like a what did you say it's a like oh you're asking for a straw <laughs> it's really interesting that's true with a lot of different words in Spanish depending on where you are they have a different meaning and um, so if I'm watching a show from Spain, I get a little bit better. If I'm watching a show from Mexico, I have to look up some of the slang words. If I'm watching something from Central or South America, and that's the great thing is like there's so many different places where you can watch stuff from now, like Hulu, Netflix, um, HBO, there's always something. That's how I keep up my Spanish. Super easy to watch stuff, but I always do a little bit better and able to maintain my grammar better and remind myself of spelling if I'm reading. So I try and read the news in Spanish and that's easier because the articles are a lot shorter. And every now and again, I will pull out a book in Spanish. And I read a lot of books in Spanish when I was in college, uh, kind of had to, but it's a much more of a struggle for me now. And I end up looking up a lot of words on on, uh, my phone like wait what is this wait what is this because I don't always remember and sometimes it's a word that I've never seen in Spanish before but I was reading a book recently and I started it in Spanish and I finally was like this book is interesting enough I really want to read it in English the cool thing was it was originally written in Spanish it was La Sombra del Viento or Shadow of the Wind the author's name is Carlos Ruiz Zafón um, super cool book. Uh, I'm not done with it yet, but I really, really do try to maintain my Spanish. It is a little bit of a struggle for me. 
Um, I think it would be a little bit easier if somebody in my house spoke Spanish, and this is when you look at me and go, they don't speak Spanish because you didn't teach them. But since I have grammatical errors, I don't want to be passing those on to my kids. And I don't know which is worse, the fact that I speak Spanish and my parents speak Spanish and my kids don't, or that I teach them bad Spanish? I don't know. I don't know which is worse. If you have any thoughts on that, let me know. Sometimes I'll be able to say stuff and they'll understand me, but I don't spend a lot of time speaking to them. Cool thing was the people who were putting in our floor um, a couple of weeks ago were Mexican. And I know nobody clocks me as having a Mexican mom or you know, being Habsies. I could tell that they spoke English the way that I speak Spanish, that it takes like all of my brain power and it really slows me down. So we made an agreement, like I would talk to them in English because they could understand it. And they would talk to me in Spanish and that way we could each communicate in our preferred language and we would still understand each other. And um, I had to run and pick up the kids one day and the guys asked my husband, he works from home now, they're like, why is it that she speaks Spanish and you don't? And he was, he was like, uh, she was raised with it. I don't think we ever clued them into the fact that my mom was Mexican. So that would have, you know, explained a lot of things. Oh, I'm really liking this eye look. Oh, it's so pretty. I love olive greens, especially in the fall. All right, um, I'm gonna throw on some liner mascara. I'll be right back. I just wiped off all the gloss I put on to keep my lips a little bit hydrated. They were feeling a little dry earlier on. And I'm gonna throw this on. This is the Maybelline Superstay Ink Crayon. And I have the shade Enjoy the View. I picked this up on a whim. I was at Walmart today um, and I was, hard to talk in line at the same time. I was picking up a few things and I saw this and I was like, oh, that's a pretty color. And I had just seen a video where Emily Noel was talking about like some of her favorite September things. And she mentioned some nude shades of this. I have one of the reds on a recommendation for her that I love. It's, I think it's called Own Your Empire. And it's a beautiful shade and it wears really well. And it does well under mask. And there is still an indoor mask mandate in my state, so uh, if I go in anywhere, oh, this is so pretty. I'm still wearing a mask. This is the finished look. I, I will tell you, I really enjoyed the look of the monochromes from Glossier, this kind of olivey green shade in Prairie, but I didn't love the way they performed. I was like, I bet you I could get a very similar look, and I feel like I do have a similar look from these Sydney Gray shades. So if you're looking at it, these top shades here are the ones from Sydney Grace that I used today, a mix of the two mattes. This one here I think is called Commission and this one is Light My World. And these are the trios from the monochromes from Glossier. You can definitely tell um, these two mattes mixed together are similar here and the rest are kind of more inspired by. Uh, because these are definitely more pigmented and more metallic. The reason that I wanted to find an alternative to the monochromes is because I have been struggling to get them to look good unless I use a primer and unless I use uh, the artistry wand from Pat McGrath to kind of adhere the sparkle. Um, and the problem I've been having was the matte did not blend. The Sydney Grace mattes are perfection and I also had problems with the sparkliest color from the monochromes ending up underneath my eye. And that would be this shade here. So this one didn't blend as beautifully. You can tell that um, it's a little bit thinner, a little bit patchier. This shade was okay, but I, I always like a little bit more intensity to my eye look. And I feel like, you know, if I blend it the way I want it, it doesn't have to look quite like this. It can look a little bit more subtle, but it's definitely kind of an inspired by look. All the shades will be listed in the description box down below. Thank you so much for watching today. I really appreciate you taking the time to support my channel through watching, um, taking the time to comment. And if you really, really appreciate what you see here, would you take the time, I know it's kind of a big ask, but to share my channel with one other person, somebody who you think would really enjoy uh, the content that I make here, or who you think has a similar makeup aesthetic. Thank you so much for being willing to do that. And I would love to know, let me know in the comment section below if you have ever spent time living in a country other than your country of origin. So if you've lived someplace else other than where you were born, let me know where it was and what your experience was and your favorite takeaway from living there. For me, I love the food. <gasps> love the food so much, so much. Thank you so much for watching today. I will see you again soon.